Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed, writing automated cucumber tests. Uh, this is the third video in my cucumber automation uh, video series, and we are going to pick up where we left off in that in our first video we just set up a proof of concept framework just to make sure that we are able to run our feature files. Uh, in, our, in our second video we talked about uh, into a little bit more detail about uh, the runner class and feature classes, uh, in particular the structure of the feature classes. Uh, so if you haven't already done so I'd advise you to have a quick a glimpse if you can at least uh, of the first two videos uh, so in this video uh, we're gonna put all of this techie uh, kind of setup side of the framework uh, to one side and actually write a web driver tests right so what are we going to do today uh, well the first thing we're gonna do is make sure our framework is set up uh, to run cucumber tests uh, we are going to manually have a look at what we're trying to automate using our uh, zoo website, uh, uh, so uh, the zoo website that I built, uh, and then writing a test for it, and then running our feature file, uh, and then having a look at the results. So let's do that. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is um, set up our framework so that it is able to run web driver tests. To do that is very straightforward actually. All you have to do is um, navigate to Selenium HQ. Uh, for those who don't know how to go here, it's, uh, you go to Google, uh, just type on the download um, Selenium, uh, go to uh, seleniumhq.org and download the server from here. That's it. And uh, once you've downloaded the jar, all you have to do is um, just uh, attach it uh, as, a, as part of a Java build path in Eclipse. Uh, don't worry, I'll put the link in the description uh, to this as well. So if we go back, all you have to do is um, right click on your project, go to properties, under um, Java build path libraries, just add in that external jar, wherever it is that downloaded. Uh, so this is mine, um, the Selenium server standalone. Okay, that. And that's it. Your framework is now ready to uh, run web driver tests. In that, it will be able to pick up all the necessary uh, uh, API calls that you make. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to now uh, finally write a feature file which will run uh, some test on our uh, zoo site. So the test I'm going to run is first thing I'm going to do is navigate to uh, the uh, uh, the home page if you like or the landing page. From here all I'm going to do is uh, go to the contact page and when on the contact page all I'm going to do is populate uh, these fields so I'm just going to say something like um, uh, and hit send once I hit send I'm just going to check that we are on this particular contact confirmation page uh, and that's it so let's go ahead and write the feature file so what I'm going to do is create a feature file in our features package and I'm going to call it uh, contact confirm dot feature I'm going to give it a description feature of um, to test contact form works when there are no errors then I'm going to write a scenario which is to actually check form is validated when there are no errors and I'm going to say given I am on uh, my zoo website when I click on the contact link and populate the contact form then I should be on the contact confirmation page there you go I'm just gonna uh, pretty format that so it's a bit 
nicely indented save it and I'm gonna run it right so the reason why I run it without writing in a step definition some uh, apologies to those who already know this from our previous videos but the reason I did this is so that uh, when this run because these steps haven't been implemented cucumber really nicely says these haven't been implemented and I am able to quite literally copy this into a step definition class uh, effectively making my life just a little bit easier so I'm going to copy this and then in the features package I'm going to create a brand new class and I'm going to call this class uh, step uh, definitions finish that and in here I'm just going to uh, copy all of this in uh, I'm going to then press Control shift o to quickly import in all the necessary classes I'm going to get rid of all of these pendings because I don't need them because this is where we're going to now uh, finally start to implement our web driver and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start actually building up uh, web driver uh, instances and start making the necessary calls so what I'm going to say is web driver driver just so that uh, I can access the driver inside any of these methods um, you've got to remember that when we write code say in a method uh, uh, I don't know let's just say here string um, something for instance uh, because this uh, variable is within this method uh, the scope of this variable is also within this method so when this method uh, finishes executing uh, the instance to this uh, something string would be lost which is why we're going to declare everything that we need uh, as far as web driver is concerned outside of the methods so here I'm going to say web driver is equal to null and uh, again let's import that in really quickly okay so the first thing I, I, I'm doing is uh, well let me rename our methods first as well um, should uh, navigate to zoo site I'm just going to say uh, should click on contact link uh, this is uh, should populate contact form and lastly check on uh, contact confirmation page right so here, here the first thing I'm going to do is instantiate the driver so I'm just going to driver is equal to a new uh, Firefox driver and then I'm going to say driver dot uh, navigate uh, to and I'm just going to grab the address from here uh, so that's a little bit more quicker on my end okay so now when this method runs it's just going to effectively just uh, open up a brand new Firefox browser an empty browser and then navigate to this website the next thing I want to do is and this is where the uh, the scoping of the variables comes in is that uh, see notice now I can um, access the driver here as well because the instance of it isn't lost uh, because it's been declared outside of the methods but within the class so here I'm going to say driver dot um, uh, find element by ID uh, dot click and what I now need to do is go and find the ID of the contact link so if I quickly go back and just uh, get the page source for this so that's where is it view page source so the contact which is here ID is contact underscore link so I'm just gonna copy that and paste it in here that should now quite happily click on that link so the next thing we're going to do is uh, as we said w when we're on the contact page we said we would populate these fields so again let's really quickly have a look at the page source for this so here it is and then we have a look at the fields so the fields are all um, they all have names which is good and they're all unique as well so the name uh, so the enter name field is called name field 
uh, the address is address underscore field postcode is postcode underscore field and email is email underscore field and the button has an ID of submit underscore message so we're gonna need this information so we're gonna need one two three four uh, five okay so let's just do driver dot find element by uh, name and we're just gonna do a send keys of something so we know we need this four times because there are four fields uh, two three four the first one was called name underscore field the oops. name underscore field sorry about that uh, then we had um, address underscore field then we had postcode underscore field and finally email underscore field and let's give it some meaningful data so we can uh, uh, just so that our test is a little bit more uh, meaningful so in the name I'm just gonna say um, uh, Jack Joe uh, I don't think anyone is actually called Jack Joe uh, address is um, uh, I, I don't know um, happy land <laughs> sorry about that uh, postcode is um, I don't know let's just say a1 um, s22 and email address is uh, I uh, will subscribe at to this dot channel there you go uh, <laughs> ah, uh, so and the last the the last thing we need to do to uh, complete the form population is to just uh, uh, push the button which was um it had an ID so let's do that ID and we're just gonna click on it and I think the ID was called um submit underscore message right perfect so once we've populated the field so let me just quickly populate it and click send now all we want to do is confirm that we're on this page so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to do an assert so assert uh, assert uh, true Uh, let's get this uh, so let's we're gonna assert using a message so we're gonna say not on contact confirmation page just in case it breaks and the condition we're gonna say is uh, driver dot get title uh, dot uh, let's do let's do equals uh, equals let's tidy this up a bit uh, equals contact confirmation okay let's do a final import okay now let's uh, well okay before we run our our test let's see what's actually happening so when we run our feature file it's going to try and map all of these steps to a step definition uh, which we've defined here and when it runs a step definition, uh, it's gonna for the first step where we try and navigate to the zoo, it's gonna create a new instance of the driver, and it's gonna open up an empty Firefox uh, browser. It's then gonna navigate to our site. Uh, I guess I don't really need this index; it'll go there by default. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, when a site has an index.html page, if no other rules are kind of uh, governed or or, or told the index page is by default the page that uh, a website navigates to uh, just a little bit of uh, extra know-how I suppose uh, if you don't know uh, but that's uh, very common knowledge uh, I think so once it's navigated to that step uh, that site uh, this method would uh, or rather this step would have then completed and you would have gone back to the feature file and looked at the next step which is when I click on the contact link so then it comes back here 
in which case the driver uh, should still be uh, uh, able uh, well it, sh it won't be null uh, because it would have been instantiated here and then it carry on uh, doing the next step uh, and, and so on so it'll click on the contact link uh, and then it try and populate the form and then submit the form and then finally do an assert so let's uh, save that and let's give it a go oh wait I've just realized I've actually made a, a slight error um, so okay going back maybe about five or ten minutes when we uh, ran our feature file without having any of the step definition defined and the console printed out a number of pending steps uh, well if you have a look when we copied in the steps uh, for whatever reason cucumber um, doesn't pick up the and as part of a uh, pending step and it picked up a when instead so if we have a look at our step definitions the steps that we copied in uh, the and was replaced with the when uh, so yeah just to just make sure that um, you're kind of aware of that if you do decide to use my um, quick shortcut um, anyway it's, it's not a it's not a major overhead I suppose compared to the number of uh, quick steps that cucumber can print it for you uh, anyway uh, right so now that we're back let's save it again and we're gonna right click and run and see what happens perfect so it's opened up a browser uh, it's clicked on contact it's filled in the form hit send and if we now go back to Eclipse it's now basically telling us that it uh, ran our scenarios uh, and it's run the steps and where you see scenario anything under that is usually um, a summary of of your feature file running and it said that it found a total of one scenario uh, of which one passed and there were a total of four steps of which four passed uh, so this is another way of saying there was a hundred percent coverage in that all of your tests passed uh, and that's fantastic that's exactly what we were expecting um, but tell you what going back to our assertion that we wrote let's fail it on purpose so let's uh, let's take out the confirmation part and just leave the contact part in there so what should happen now is now when we run our feature file what will happen is it'll go through the steps as normal but when it tries to do the assertion it will fail because the page will not be equal to contact it will be equal to contact confirmation and in that instance we should see this message which we provided uh, print out as part of the assertion so let's save it uh, right click and run again and see what happens so it's opened the browser click on contact fill in the form hit send and now if we go back to Eclipse we now have an assertion error so it's basically saying uh, that it was able to run the first three steps without any issues but when it tried to run uh, the last step i.e and then I should be on the contact confirmation page step it said that there is an assertion failed error uh, and it's printed out the message that we provided uh, more importantly if you look at the very bottom where I said all the scenario uh, the summary of your test is is quite literally said that uh, it's found one scenario of which one failed and it's found four steps of which three passed and one failed uh, this should be self-explanatory even though we had a couple of steps pass in our scenario. Uh, the scenario entirely failed because it didn't complete from end to end. Hence why it said one scenario failed. Uh, so if you were to take this from a, a testing perspective um, we have failed all our tests uh, which is good. And at the bottom it's kind of given you a little bit more explanation as to where the failure is. In fact if you then uh, follow these, uh, these links that uh, is provided as part of the stack trace it will take you exactly where it's failed. And that's it for this video folks. Uh, we covered um, not that much theoretical information but we certainly covered more technical. Uh, we especially covered how to write uh, finally a web driver script uh, that goes with our feature script. So yeah, uh, if you um, enjoy my videos and find they bring you some new knowledge or insight into writing cucumber tests then, then yeah, please subscribe and rate. Now, if you have any questions or video suggestions, then please leave a comment below. Many thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao.